Hey folks, it's time for another edition of what sold on eBay. So this will be for February of 2024. I have to say February was kind of a disappointment um, compared to January, which was a banner month for us. Our revenue was way up over the January prior. This February, our revenue was way down over the January prior. So it really felt like a grind. Um, we were still getting some cool stuff from our sourcing opportunity um, that shall remain unnamed, um, including, and I guess this is technically March, but I just got the other day, which I've been putting off buying for ages, is a rack for my weights. <laughs> so happy to see that. Caught it just before it got thrown away, and now I have a weight rack. I almost went to Canadian Tire and spent 80 bucks on that just this weekend, and there it is. Now I don't have to buy it, which is great. Um, I'm kind of a connoisseur of like junk and garbage destined workout equipment. My um, my stationary bike back here is also uh, was snapped up from the um, zero waste facility near near us. Um, it was getting thrown out and it works perfectly. In fact, it was brand new. Anyway, uh, I digress. Where am I? Okay, we're talking about what sold on eBay in February. Yes, it was a bit of a tough month. Um, you know, and I, I, I'm not really sure why we were definitely hustling, maybe not listing like as, um, hot inventory, like not as many things that sell really quickly. We were posting a lot of cool items that are going to take a while to sell and that's fine. They're long tail. You know, some of them are actually quite valuable and hopefully the right buyer will come along. Um, but I'm going to go through eBay anyways and show you a bunch of interesting things that we sold this month. So let me just share my screen and we'll get right on that. Okay, let's start with the beginning of the month. So this one sold right around the 1st of February. Um, a pen for $104 US. I love this because um, this actually was free. Um, the license plate score that we got last fall, which you've heard me talk a lot about, if you've been watching the channel for a while, um, included this pen and another one that's also valuable but hasn't sold yet. Um, so I was really excited to make the sale. Easy shipper. Um, yeah, we thought they were neat old vintage pens. We, we actually don't know a lot about this category of collectibles. I know like people collect Mont Blanc or whatever, but like I just, I'm not well versed in this category. So I was excited to do some research and see that there was some value here. And it looks like I priced it just about right. Um, selling it at 20% off. I was pretty happy with that sale. Of course, given the cost of goods, um, there's definitely nothing to complain about there. So yeah, just an old pen this black ripple, I kind of looked around for similar ones and uh, got the keywords for the listing. It had this number 52 and a half on the end, which I actually didn't see at first. And a buyer alerted me to the fact that I needed to include that in a listing. Um, it wasn't the person who bought it, I don't think, but it was another eBay user. So I was grateful for that and was able to improve the listing and sell this pen, which I don't even know if it works. <laughs> really have no idea. Um, okay. This, okay, I'm just sharing this one because um, I think I actually shared a silver plated uh, item in my what sold in January. Um, so why not just continue the trend? This piece is kind of a weird one. As you can see, it's got some, uh, it needs to be polished, right? So somebody had some weirdly shaped things on this tray. We picked this up from an estate sale in Portland about a year ago. And I remember that it was $4. Um, and we didn't, couldn't really read the markings on it while we were at the sale. And we were like, ah, it's probably, I think it's plated, but this Reed and Barton seems kind of collectible. The internet wasn't working well at this estate sale. So it was really hard to research, but I mean, what am I doing? Then you just, you sit there and you go, why am I researching something that's priced at $4? Like, like just buy it. I mean, the, <laughs> the absolute worst case scenario is I end up donating it to Value Village and I lose $4. Like I can, it's fine. I can afford that. Um, so yeah, anyway, pick this up for uh, four bucks and oh, it sold at the exact same price as the pen that I just showed you. So $103.99. Um, and that's so it took almost a year, just about a year to sell. Um, but you know, that's okay. It doesn't take up much space. And I was very happy to get that one. So yeah, um, so not discounting silver plated items is something I said last month. And I honestly can't believe I'm saying it again. Um, but I am here it is. So Reed and Barton, I guess is one brand to look out for. I think this was probably a tray that was used on a railroad, like in a railroad car to serve uh, food on or tea or something, you know, back when people traveled by train, but nobody does that anymore. Next up is this Pandora. This was actually the same trip that we went on, uh, but not the same estate sale. 
that we picked up this Pandora 12 charm bracelet, which they had, you know, at estate sales, sometimes there's, um, there's like a, a glass case at the front, you know, sort of where the checkout is, where they keep like small things that are valuable because they're so easy to just, you know, walk away with. So this was in that in there and we were <clears throat> getting ready to pay and Johan spotted it and it was $35. And we were like, oh, okay, well, Pandora, you know, like they do make fakes and stuff, but we took a quick look at it and it, it really had the weight and it felt real. So we bought it for $35 and, you know, sold it, sold it for $250 again, took about a year. And I think that's a great flip, honestly, for something, especially that tiny, right? We have just like all those little like plastic Plano cases that you put like die cast cars in or whatever. We use them for jewelry and we just stack them up. And it just sits in there for a year. So um, not really taking up any significant space in the warehouse. I love smelling. smelling. I love selling small things like this. Um, Pandora can be long tail. It used to be really, really hot. Now it seems to take a little bit longer. But if you can get it cheap enough, definitely worth picking up. Oh, okay. So this one, this is fun. Um, so this is from our uh sourcing opportunity um so this was going to be thrown out soon or recycled i guess maybe and it's a desktop 3d scanner when i saw it there in the box i literally didn't know what it was but i was like it's in the box and i thought it was new in the box turns out it wasn't but um i thought it was so i grabbed it and looked at it later and then when i plugged it in to try and test it and see if it worked and figure out what on earth it was. Um, I learned that this company, Next Engine, had gone out of business. And so you weren't able to download the software for it anymore. But I still found sold comps. So people must be able to get the software. Um, this one actually had the disc in it, the CD. So maybe that was enough to be able to use this machine. Um, I really didn't know. And I don't have a disk drive on my laptop, so I wasn't going to go through the whole process of downloading the software and figuring it out. So I sold it untested, four parts, and uh, 250 bucks. It only took about four or five days to sell. So that was great. I was really happy about that sale. Okay, I love this one. This vintage 1994 Iron Maiden display poster. It's made of cardboard. It probably would have been in a record store. And I think Johan picked it up at a yard sale um, that was being run by someone who used to own a record store or CD shop or something like that. Um, and so I don't know exactly when we got it. I know it was a few years ago. It was supposed to have been listed. And when we were going through and cleaning up a little area in the shop, we found this and we realized that it had never been listed. Um, it's so cool. There are Iron Maiden collectors everywhere. They're crazy fanatics. And this was a unique piece. So um, it was actually a couple of pieces. As you can see there, there's two pieces of the skeleton guy on the motorcycle but just one backer so I sold them all together and it seems like I sell a lot of things at 20% off that's fine so um actually I might have done 140 on this if I remember correctly I think I actually took a best offer but what I loved about this sale was that the buyer actually had Iron Maiden in their eBay username so I was like this person is a real fan you know they're collecting Iron Maiden stuff so I gave them a little bit of a bigger break on the price and then especially just knowing that we'd had it um, sitting around for so long, I would rather get rid of something like this that's large and flat because if we start moving it around, it can get further damage. So I was happy to get this sale. And this, this didn't take long, I think less than a month. Uh, actually, maybe a little bit longer because I usually don't add best offer until something's been up for at least 30 days. So it was probably more like 45 days or something that it took to sell, um, but another pretty good sale. Um, our average selling price was down about $10 for February. Um, so it was great to get sales like this to kind of keep it at a reasonable level. Um, I really want our average selling price to be over $75 always, and it dropped into the 60s uh, this month. So hopefully we can get some more valuable stuff like this in there to bring that average selling price back up. This one I'm only sharing with you because um, this is one of those types of items that I personally would never have listed. I would never pick this item and I would never post it. But Johan said, no, you've got to post it. It's worth $40, which is exactly what we got for it. And I want to point out that um, this is one of the advantages of working with another person on a reselling business. I know a lot of you do this alone. And when you have a partner, whether that's a business partner, a friend, a spouse, whoever, 
you have somebody else's mind and somebody else's like picker mentality looking at things and they see stuff value in things that you don't and it goes both ways like sometimes Johan's like I'm gonna throw this out and I'm like no no I can get money for that or it's the other way around in this case I was like who buys a leather document bag but people do and less than a month to sell at full price this Pegasus soft side vintage briefcase it was in really nice condition I guess it's kind of a cool piece aesthetically um it doesn't really fit a laptop I'm just not sure of its utility or why somebody would want it but hey I'm happy that it sold this face sold way too fast so this is an item I may have fumbled I know that it was Meiji period so right around the turn of the century late 1800s to early 1900s I was pretty sure that I was right about the date of it but I did run it by a Facebook group on um, collecting Japanese um, antiques and, and art to confirm my belief that it was from the Meiji period and not a reproduction the people in the group agreed so I decided to list it this one actually got damaged. Um, I, I rescued this from the trash as well, but it had been dropped. And so if actually if I show, yeah, if I show down here, like the bottom of it had been dropped and it had some cracks in the enamels on the bottom and a little dent on the corner. So I knew that that would significantly affect the value of it. Um, Meiji period bases can sell for a few hundred dollars, maybe sometimes more if they're by a known artist, but how would I know? So I thought with the damage on it, and I had seen many bases of this size sell in this price range or lower. Um, and so I thought 125 seems like a fair price, especially given what we paid for it, which was almost nothing. And it sold in under an hour. Uh, so again, one of those sales that you're happy because it goes quickly, um, but you think, how much money did I leave on the table there? Anyway, I hope the buyer is happy. Um, it was great to get something out the door. You can never be disappointed with really fast sales. Uh, it's great to just move things along, especially when they're over $100 like this one. A couple more I want to show you, and this is from the same uh, place as the vase. So uh, it was this duck. I, I don't know why, but I have kind of a thing for duck decoys. I don't know what it is. I don't particularly like ducks. I'm not a bird watcher. Um, I don't know what it is, but there's something about the aesthetic of a duck decoy that I just think is really cool. And I think it's neat that people collect them. Most of the ones we've ever gotten were um, relatively low value, like 50, 60 bucks. Um, you know, you don't find a special one very often, but this one was destined for the trash, but luckily it had not been damaged and it came out of there in absolutely perfect condition. And it was signed on the bottom. So this is a Gossett, Chris Gossett duck. And if we show the bottom here, yeah, so there's the um, signature in there. And we have the limited edition tag on the bottom. Uh, maybe, how big is this thing? Maybe like eight or nine inches long, I think. Not huge. Uh, yeah, nine inches long. And it's in beautiful condition. Really cool colors with the feathers and everything there. And that sold overnight. Uh, so pretty fast for full price, $125. This one I'm sharing with you just in case you don't know that even empty boxes can have reasonably good value. So this is just a box for a particular type of Game Boy Advance, does not include any games, does not include the system. Um, it's just the inserts and the box. And we've done okay with empty boxes in the past. Uh, this one was again picked out of the um, trash or about to be gone in the trash. And it was with a bunch of actual video games that were from different systems like Xbox 360, we get those all the time. They don't usually have a lot of value, um, but this one was in there and disappointed to not have the system in it. Um, but I did an offer to watchers of 10% off and somebody set that up right away. So $40.49 US I got for this empty Game Boy box. So pretty happy about that and a nice easy shipper as well. And the last one I'm gonna show you, which I just love because I just like the aesthetic of this thing. Um, these silver overlay bottles are really cool. They're aesthetically so pleasing to look at, just beautiful pieces. Um, the value on them is always lower than I think it should be uh, for what they are, for the intricacy of them. Um, but this one was great with the uh, rooster on the top and then you could like, you could tip it and the liquor comes out the rooster's mouth. Now I suspect that the uh, stopper is not original 
to the decanter, the styles of them are totally different, but it did fit. Um, and just because I didn't feel like trying to sell a decanter without a stopper, and this was with it in the estate where we originally got it from, I just kept them together and sold it. So this was about a month to sell at full price, $80. So very happy with that sale. Um, that's just a few of them. I mean, there were a whole bunch more that I wanted to show you, uh, but it's like, it's actually really hard to like, um, you know, decide because we sell so many unique items and things that you just don't see every day it's hard to decide like what to show you so i hope those 10 things kind of get you thinking about the sort of stuff that you might be picking at your next sale um and so that's what sold on ebay for february march is looking pretty good so far uh, march is usually an okay month for us um and we're picking up some really cool things. We got, uh, what did we get on the weekend? We got a whole bunch of brand new pairs of shoes, a couple of boxes of comic books, which is great because we haven't picked up comic books in about two months. And those are, uh, that's our bread and butter category. We sell tons of them. And so we're always trying to find more and more and more to fill out our store with comic books. So we're happy to get those and those will be posted in the coming weeks. And you know what happens, like sells like. So as soon as we start listing more comic books, we will, start selling the old ones even faster. Um, so looking forward to that. And I'm pretty excited about what March has to offer, especially with the weather getting a little bit warmer. Well, not this week. It's actually pretty cold. But uh, hopefully spring is coming. And when spring comes, you know, people start putting stuff out in the back alleys. The yard sales begin. And you have all kinds of new opportunities for sourcing. So we won't have to rely on the couple of places that we've been going to um, in January and February. So we should get some pretty unique and fun things. That's it. What sold for you on eBay? Please leave a comment and tell me what your favorite sale of the month was. I want to see what you're picking up uh, as well. Have a great day. Want more videos like this? Make sure to click like, subscribe, and leave a comment below to tell me what you want to see more of.